In its next concert, January 24th, the Boston Modern Orchestra Project will explore musical frontiers with connections to Hungary. The program includes works by well-known 20th century composers and by two contemporary composers. One of them teaches composition at the New England Conservatory, and the orchestra will give the first performance of her new work, De Debrecen Passion. We'd like to welcome Kati Agoc. Thank you very much for being with us, Kati. Thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, I, people say, oh, you're, you're Canadian, and you, one of your parents is American, so why is Hungary so important? Well, my dad actually left Hungary. My dad was born in Hungary, and he left Hungary after, shortly after the revolution in 1956. He was working at the Hungarian radio there, and it became clear that they had to leave right away. And he then made a life in the United States, which led to my being born. Um, and he moved back to Hungary. So in the 90s when things opened up there again. So it's a really important tradition for me as a musician to have that DNA and Hungary is such a vital, has such a vital musical tradition. So it's exciting to be a part of that and have a dialogue with that. Uh, so. Now, uh, a lot of our viewers, maybe they heard about how much better things got uh, with, with the fall of communism in Eastern and Central Europe. But uh, more recently, I guess uh, we've heard more complaints. Well, it's an interesting time in Hungary because there have been a lot of changes, especially in the last um, 10 years and especially the last five years or so. So things, have, things are tough there for artists now. There's, there's censorship again and there's a lot of, there are a lot of funding cuts and sort of making sure that, that people with ties, certain ties to the government are in leadership positions. So it's been, things have changed a lot and, and uh, there, the climate is, is different there. And a lot of younger people are leaving now too. So I think my piece, that, that feeds into a little bit about my piece because my piece uses by te text by a, a poet of our time called Silat Borbai, who's a Hungarian poet from the eastern part of the country. Debrecen is the second largest city in Hungary and it's in the east, in a more rural area than Budapest, which uh, most people know. I know you've been to Budapest. So. Uh, and, and it's quite different from the parts of, of Hungary that, that uh, Borbai wrote about because he, um, he really opens up cans of worms yeah, he, he doesn't he isn't shy about writing about controversial things and it's also really interesting because he it, although he was a Christian, he brings elements of Jewish mysticism into his poetry and that's something that I I used in my piece, which it, my piece has elements of the traditional Christian passion, but it also brings a Kabbalistic prayer in the center of the piece and layers that over the and dialogues and resonates with the Christian imagery. It also reminds me of the, uh, the Golikov passion. Yes. Uh, talk about the tradition that you play. I know you don't exclusively pull out of the Hungarian tradition, but talk about what it is, because it is reflected in this program, not only with your music. Right. And, you know, it's, it's really an amazing program, and I think anyone who's a music lover and is in Boston on the night of January 24th, you've got to be at this concert. I mean, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, they're doing the Ligeti Violin Concerto, and the violinist Gabi Diaz is just a stunning um, violinist. They're also doing Bartok's Village Scenes, which is sort of an answer to Stravinsky's Les Nos, where there's a wedding and there's, there's elements of village life. Um, and a piece by Balint Karoshi, who's a, a young a rising Hungarian composer also. So I think a lot of what feeds into Hungarian music is the rhythms of the language. That's one thing that you see in a, in a lot of these pieces, very distinct, very energetic rhythms. And that comes from the rhythms of the language itself. No, it's not just that, that wild, high-speed fiddling. This is also talking music, too. Well, yeah, it's dramatic. And, uh, um, I know my piece is very dramatic. It has a lot of lyrical line in it, but it also has I, at one point, I have the orchestra recite the the end of the the Hebrew prayer. So it's a, it's a piece for women's chorus, but it's got a very very rich orchestral palette and includes this this sort of chanting from the orchestra. So um, it also sings a piece about healing from trauma. I think it is. It's it's really, in a way, it's a collective healing, and in a way, it's a tribute to the poet who unfortunately we lost last year, and he was only uh, fifty. So. He, so in a way, it's, um, it, it, it has tremendous respect for the musicality of his words, and it, it is a, in a way, maybe it's a passion for the poet in a certain sense as well. Uh, well, there's a little bit of an anticipation uh, of this in uh, one of your recent works uh, called Vessel, and we're going to bring up an excerpt from that.
couple of qualities here. They talk about your lyricism and the orchestration. It's very, um, you know, very crystalline, clear. Well, I love creating this sort of this pristine sound world and with a lot of things resonating. And this this new piece uses a lot of pitched percussion that del that resonates delicately along with the voices. And it also uses the Hungarian symbolum, which is really uh, really associated with the Roma musicians. Right, yeah. and and I heard a lot about the. The village, because my family's originally from the village in Hungary, and I heard about the symbol and being brought into the village, um, and how exciting that was for them. And but I've used the symbol sort of in my own way in this, and to, to create this this layer over the voices. And so, that, I'm really excited to hear that. Right. And we should mention finally, uh, this concert is going to be on the 24th at Jordan it's Hall. It's on the 24th. You can get tickets through bmop.org. That's bmop.org. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Chris. Kati Agoch. Still to come, the report from South Boston with Maureen Dayhill.